how to apply ultrasound onto chronic trapezius myofasciitis. All right, this next demonstration is going to be doing ultrasound at a frequency of 1 megahertz, duty cycle 100%, and that would be for continuous ultrasound. We're going to be um, putting some warm deep heat into this trapezius right here that is very sore in this patient. Um, of course, it goes so deep, it goes multiple centimeters into the skin that it might actually get into some other muscles in here like the supraspinatus or the levator. But uh, I'm going to be using a coupling agent. This is the ultrasound gel we're using today. And this is a, um, it's a, it has to be a specific type of gel. And if I were nice, I would have warmed this up. So this patient's pretty tough because it's a little bit chilly going on him right now. Um, you can warm your ultrasound gel just by running it under hot water. Um, and the most important thing is pre-spread your ultrasound gel everywhere you want to treat. Don't make too big of a treatment area because you're only supposed to treat about the size of your hand. So this will be one treatment and this will have to be a second treatment. There's also a limit on how long we're allowed to do ultrasound in one body area. We don't want to do it more than 15 minutes per body area. So a lot of times people will do seven minutes on one shoulder, seven minutes on the other. You can see the light's not on, so it's not actually ultrasounding him, so I'm not breaking the ultrasound head or anything. Now, what is that little reference to? Well, remember, if I take the ultrasound head off the patient, I can actually break the crystal because the vibration is hitting nothing, and it's like hitting a glass that has no liquid in it. So you want to be in contact at all times. So what I recommend is when you're first doing ultrasound, you make sure to practice with the ultrasound head a few times with it turned off on each patient. So this is a pretty good job that I'm doing right here. However, as I get right to where the scapula is in this area, he's going to get a zing if I go too slowly. So you want to go nice and slowly on the muscles, but as soon as you get to the scapula where there's a bone, you're going to have to speed up. And that is again because of the periosteal reaction. So if I slow much too much here, he might say, ow, and it feels like a bee sting. It lasts about a minute. Um, it scares the pants off your patient, so be nice. And there you go. The other thing is, I don't want to do something like this and lift off the ultrasound head. Because when I do that, I again cause all of the focus to come through here. First of all, I'm risking breaking the ultrasound head where it was not in contact with the patient. And on the other side where it was in contact with the patient, I'm risk risking focusing all of the ultrasound vibrations or sound waves through this one side and that could cause a hot, hot spot on him. Because remember, a good ultrasound head is what a BNR, beam non-uniformity ratio of, uh, ideally it's four to one, but most machines these days are five to one. So anything above six to one is no good. So look at your ultrasound heads, you guys. Make sure that when you buy your ultrasound head, you look at the wire and see what it says. You can see this one right here. I don't know if it's in focus, but the BNR on this one's five to one. All right. So that means for every, is there a conformity in how much is happening in the vibrations coming out? Or is there any spikes? So let's say it was 14 to 1, be like that. And that scares the pants off the patient, can burn him. It's totally, totally mean. All right, so now I'm going to turn this on just so you can see me working with him. And I'll be talking to him and getting him feedback from him. All right, I've spread my ultrasound gel. Okay, I'm going to be starting to do the ultrasound now. You'll be feeling a warmth and I don't want it to go too hot. So raise your hand up when you feel like it's a little bit hot. And then I'll slow it down and it won't bring it any higher than that. So now once the light is on, you need to start moving it. Some of the older ultrasound machines do not have a light on the back of the head. So you have to look down at the dial and see if the intensity is going up. How about now? It's at about one watt per centimeter squared. Feeling any heat yet? No. Nope. Okay. Again, I'm sticking mostly in the muscle area and at a pretty good speed because I want him to feel it. If you go too quickly, he will not feel the heat. You'll have wasted everybody's time. Ultrasound is not for massaging. The maximum I want to go to is 2 watts per centimeter squared when I'm in a continuous setting on in contact with the patient. So the machine right now will let me go to 2.5, but I won't let myself go above 2. You can see I'm just sort of using different techniques. They say you want to do either a figure eight or circles. You just don't want to end up doing any one area too long. You feel anything going on the sh when I went over the shoulder blade, didn't you? So 
right here. I'll, I'll avoid the shoulder blade a little bit more. I'll zip it this time so he doesn't get a lot of concentration there. The other thing about ultrasound, therapeutic ultrasound, is you don't want to aim it towards any fluid-filled cavities in the human body. So the spinal cord, the brain, the carotid sinus. So that's an important thing to remember. There is a, a potential risk, they say, of having a, uh, a cavitation effect, which means there can be a little bubble forming in the liquid of the spinal fluid, and that would be just terrible. Feels good, doesn't it? Yes. Get rid of some of these trigger points you have in here.